In this video, I'm going to go over how to um, get your raw data, which you've collected from your experiment, and turn it into a nice, neat data table and turn it into a clear graph that shows the equation. Okay, so here's the data that we've collected. We've got our five values for our drop height, and we've got all of our measured values here for our bounce height, which is our dependent variable. I'm just going to fix it so that I have the same number of decimal places in all my numbers, which I do with this little shift decimal place button. Um, okay, so my first step here is going to be to calculate the averages of all my trials. Um, and to do that, I just punch equals and write average, open bracket, and then I highlight the three values that I collected that I want to get the average of and I close the bracket so that what I've typed into the cell looks like this and then I hit enter and that has now worked out the average of these three numbers I'm then going to take the little blue autocomplete square in the bottom corner of the cell here click on it and drag down and it will automatically calculate the average of each of the other rows so now I have my average values and all of my raw data and my drop height. Now I'm just going to neaten up the formatting of this this chart a little bit. All of these four rows have bounce height data. So I'm just going to merge these four cells so that, and then center the, my bounce height here. And now this graph tells me that all of this stuff is about bounce height and it's all measured in meters. And this is the drop height. Um, in fact, I might just merge these ones too like so, and then center it vertically like that just to make it look nice. Then as a last step I'll add some borders to my chart. And now that's ready to be pasted into my report. In fact, I kind of like everything centered, so I'm going to center everything like that. Okay, my next step is that I want to plot the graph. So before I plot the graph I would probably highlight all of this and then control C and then paste it into my report but I'm not going to do that now so I'm going to hide these three columns so all I did to select them was I clicked on I clicked on B I hold down shift and then I click on D and then I'm going to right click anywhere in that selection and hide columns B to D so that I now only have my drop height and my average bounce height in two columns all the other columns are still there, they're just hidden in between here. Then I'm going to click on just on any empty cell, and then I'm going to insert a chart. So I get this chart that says no data because I had just this empty cell selected. And now I'm going to go about just making this chart look like a proper scientific graph. So first thing, I'm going to change the chart type to a scatter chart and then I'm going to click this select data range to tell it what numbers to include and I'm going to click on my first number and then just highlight all of the data that I want in my graph and click OK. So Now we have all of our points on our chart. It's not quite formatted the way we want but this looks promising. So our next step, it doesn't really matter what order you do these in, um, but just so that I know what I'm talking about, I'm going to start by labeling my axes. So I go to Chart and Axis Title, I click on this drop menu, and I choose Horizontal Axis Title. And my horizontal scale here goes 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. That's clearly my drop height. So my independent variable should always go on my horizontal axis, which it will if you put that in your first column. Okay, so I'm going to label this drop height, and I'm going to include the unit, which was meters. And then I'm going to label the vertical axis, and that one was the average bounce height. And that was also in meters. You can see that they appear as you write them here on the, on the chart. Okay, we've now labeled the axes. We can give it a title not going to worry so much about the title for now. Okay, our next one that we're going to click on is series. And we can scroll down until we get to this point shape. 
because we, sh we don't really want circles. We want to have X's so that we know where the middles of our points are. And these X's are tiny, so I'm going to increase the size to 14 so I can clearly see where the X's are. Okay, and while I'm here, no, in fact, I'm not. Okay, so I'm going to reduce that. And I'm going to then choose horizontal axis. And what I want to do is instead of starting at 0.2 meters here, I want to start at zero so I can see the, the shape of my graph clearly. So now it starts at zero. I just do that. So what I did was I went to horizontal axis. I changed the minimum value to zero. Okay, now the only thing that remains is to include a line, and I'm just going to show how to do that. So if you click on series again, and right down the bottom here of the series options, it has a trend line option. We'll just tick that, and it automatically puts a straight line, which is exactly what we want. Um, and uh, what we can get it to do is to show the equation for it as well. So if we click on Use Equation here, it gives us an equation here with a gradient times x plus our y-intercept, which is where the line crosses would cross the vertical axis, which is negative 0 0.0193. So if we just remember those numbers here, in fact, I might just take a little screen clipping of those so that I can remember them. And I'll plonk that here. Um, if you want your if your options thing disappears here, all you, all you need to do to get it back is double click on the graph. Okay, so rather than have this, this isn't quite formatted the way that we want. So to get our correct equation, we choose custom here. You can see that it now says trend line for series one. That's what it says in here. Let's write our proper equation. So our proper equation is going to be bounce height, which has the symbol h. So we can write h equals, and then our gradient, which from which we clipped here, it was 0 0.66, and then times, which we can represent with a little asterisk, and then we want our independent variable symbol. Our independent variable was drop height, which had the symbol D, I think, in our report. And then we can write um, plus our y-intercept, but our y-intercept is negative, so we can just write minus 0 0.0193. This last step is kind of a merit excellence point. Um, it's going to be the same every time. You'll, you'll get the equation, which looks like that, like that thing that we clipped. Um, and all you need to do once you've got that equation, I'll just take you back to here, is write the names of your variables. So h is your dependent variable equals 0 0.66 times your dependent variable, your independent variable minus minus your y-intercept that was given to you by the program. Okay, so now this graph looks the way that we want it to look. So I'm going to get rid of the editor. Now you could either print that straight away, or you could paste it into your report if you're writing your report online. In fact, I can see that this r-squared thing is here. I don't actually want that, so I'm going to get rid of that. 